Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name's Teacher Mike, or you can call me Mike. Today, we're going to talk about compound words, and we'll talk about what they are, how to use them, and different examples. So we'll start here with compound words. And a compound word is when two or more words are put together to form a new word or a new, a new word with a new meaning. So there are three types of compound words that we'll talk about today. The first one is called a closed form compound word, and that's where the words are together. So a notebook or a keyboard or a basketball, and that's where there's no space or hyphen in between. The second type is a hyphenated form compound word, such as a six pack, like a six pack of Coca-Cola or, or a mother-in-law which is a, um, the mother of a, someone's spouse, or the word check in. And that means to check in and let them know that you have arrived. So if you check into a hotel reservation, or you can check in to an airport for your flight. The last one we have is called an open form compound word. And that's where the words are separated by a space, it's just like um, a post office where you can get your mail, real estate where they sell different apartments or land or houses is real estate and vice president, which is the, the president. And then the person right below them is called the vice president in the United States. So the first part, uh, the first one we're going to talk about is called a closed form compound word. So closed form, just like we talked about, it's when two words are together and there's no space. So it's two separate words. So the first example is a campfire. So we take the word camp, where you can go camping and you stay in a tent, and then fire and put them together. And then you have a campfire, which you would do when you're camping, maybe at night and roast s'mores over. Or maybe you would tell stories at, along the campfire at night. The second one is popcorn. So the word pop, which can sometimes mean like soda that you would drink, but this is more of an action like explode. So it's little corn seeds that they cook and they explode into popcorn. So it's two words, pop and corn, which you can eat popcorn at the movie theaters or maybe at home watching Netflix. And then the second word is mailbox. So we have mail, which you can get from a post office, and then a box. So it's mail, box, together. And that's where the post office has a mailman or mailwoman to deliver your mail. And they put it in your mailbox every day. And you can get your letters or other things you might have sent in the mail. The second type we'll talk about is hyphenated form compound words. And those are words where they have a hyphen in the middle, which is the little dash you can see there. So if you see the word merry-go-round, often you might see that as a, um, at a circus or a carnival. And a merry-go-round, they have the fake horses that you can sit on, and it goes around in a circle. And that is a compound of three different words, because a compound can be just more than one. So most of the examples we saw today are just two words that we combine. Here, we have three different words. So we have merry, which can mean happy, and then go, which is the verb, and round, which can mean, um, which is the, the noun of a, like a circle is round. So we put all three of those, merry, go, round, and that is where you can sit on the horse and go around in a circle. And then we have six the letter, uh, the the number six, and then a pack, which just means um, some. It's inside of more than one thing is inside of it. So you can have a pack or a deck of cards. And here we have a pack of soda. You can see it says soda pop, which is just a, another word. You might call it pop or soda in English. We have different words we use, but here it's a six pack. So it's a six pack is six sodas in one container or a pack is the container so we put those together and then second or the last one is 
check in. So that's where you can go into um, you, if you have a reservation at something, maybe you have a reservation at a hotel or a restaurant or the airport in this example. And that checking in is when you go to the front office or the desk and let them know that you have arrived because let them know you have arrived for your reservation. So we say check in because check um, can mean multiple things, but here it just means to give or inform them that you're here and then in. So you're checking in. So you can, at a hotel, you check in and then they will give you your key to your hotel room or you can check into a restaurant to let them know you are here for your reservation and then they will take you to your table to eat or you can check into an airport and they will give you your ticket for the airplane and then also you can check in your luggage. So if you have luggage where, or, or a suitcase with your clothes and other belongings, you would give that to them and they will put it on the airplane. So that's check in. All right. So we'll talk a little bit more about hyphenated compound words because there's a, a a few different examples that we can do and, and different ways to talk about them. So hyphenated compounds words um, are most commonly joined together and they're a, and are combined to form an adjective before a noun. So an adjective before a noun in this example, 40 acre farm. So 40, the number, an acre is a unit of um, measurement or land. So an acre, or you might call it a hectare, um, is a, a certain plot or a certain size land. And then 40 acres farm, meaning whoever owns that farm has 40 acres of land to farm and put vegetables or crops or other animals on there. So we'll give a few more examples of what we're talking about when we put the adjective before the noun. So a full-time job. So you can have a job where you work at, and it can be maybe every day, every other day, um, and full-time in the United States, it might be different in your country, but full-time means 40 hours, so 40 hours, four zero hours per week um, or more. Sometimes if you have to work more, you can also have a part-time job, which would be another example of this hyphenated, and that just means less than 40 hours. So maybe you go to university and you work at a job, but not full time, just part time. That would be a four, uh, part time job. And that is where the adjective is before the noun, because we're describing what kind of job you have or how much you work, rather. And then we have the example you can see here in the, um, in the, the second photo, the building on campus housing. So when you go to university, often you can stay on campus, which means the campus where the college or the university is. You can stay in their dorms, or we call it dormitories or dorms for short. And you can stay on the campus in the dorms with other students. Or if you'd like, you can stay, we, we say off campus in maybe an apartment that you would rent yourself, or maybe you stay with your parents, something like that. So on campus housing is describing what kind of housing we have. So it's on campus in the dormitories with other students. And then we have in the middle, you can see the, the person pushing the button. It's state of the art technology. So we're describing technology here, and then we put the adverb adjective in front of that. So state of the art just means very advanced or um, at the most current or the most modern type of technology. And that can it really relate to any different types of field, technological fields. Maybe you work in the software, computer software industry, and you have state of the art computers or maybe you work in science and you're doing research and you have state-of-the-art testing machines to test different things. Maybe they're testing blood or different um, genetics, DNA, things like that. And then we have, you see the last photo, the three people together in the bottom right are a family. So a business, a family-run business is again describing the business. So the adjective before the noun, 
And it's a family run business. So all of the family works together. And often we, you see a family run business where you have maybe the parents start something or the mother or father, and then they pass it down to their sons or daughters when they all work together. And then they might pass it down to the grandkids or the grandsons after that. And that's a family run business where the whole family can be helping to run a certain type of business. And it can be any business from um, maybe it's a construction business to a restaurant or a convenience store. So that's these type of hyphenated words where the adjective is before the noun. And now the other ones we'll talk about is um, hyphenated compound words can become open compound words. Now this is a little tricky, but again, we have the hyphen or that dash in between the two words. Here, when we change it, it'll um, the hyphenated compound word becomes open compound words when they are placed after the word they describe. So it changes the hyphenated word. It'll go from a um, the hyphenated word here, the first example, the job is full time. So if you remember the last page, it said full time job and full time is again describing the job. So we put it in before uh, we put the adjective before the noun. And here, when we switch it and put it after the noun, so now full time is after job, we it becomes an open compound. So it's no longer a, a hyphenated compound. We also have the housing is all on campus for freshmen, which a freshman is just the first year of college or university. So it's all on campus. That means that they have to stay on campus. And you'll see that at a lot of universities in the United States, where if you're your first year student or a freshman, you have to stay with other students, that just helps you get used to the campus, get to know your surroundings, where things are located, and you get to meet other people. So it was a on-campus housing, and on-campus is the adjective describing campus, the noun. And now when we put, um, when we switch it, it becomes the housing is all on campus. So, and then we have its features are truly state of the art. So we were in the last page talking about state of the art technology. And again, technology, the noun, state of the art, adjective, the housing, or I'm sorry, the, the features are truly state of the art. So now maybe we're inside a building and they, someone might give you a tour or show you the different technology. And they would say here in our facilities or in our building or our company, we have state of the art technology. And then when you, if you're walking around, you might say, wow, these features are truly state of the art. So these features or the way this machine uh, or technology functions is very advanced, very modern. And then we have the last one. This business is still family run. So again, it was family run business. Now we switch them. So now the, the family run are, are still together, but we put them after the word business. So business is still the noun. And family run was hyphenated because it was a compound word describing the business. Um, and now we put it after. So now it's an open compound, but we're still talking about what kind of business is it? It's a family run business. And so because we put the adjective after, it's an open compound in this instance. So the, tech, the second type, or I'm sorry, the third type, we talked about closed compounds, hyphenated compounds. Now we'll talk about open form compounds which is just kind of the end of what we talked about when we switch the hyphenated compound. So it might sound confusing, but as we do examples, it'll help you understand. And if anyone here is, is listening, has questions um, or comments, things that they're confused about, you can let me know as I go on and, and talk about it and I can explain, or we can talk about it at the end as well for questions. So open compound word is just what it sounds like. It's when the two words are together but they are separate. So there's a space in between them. So the, the closed compounds, two words together, no space or hyphen. Hyphenated where is two words, two or more words together with the hyphen. You can remember merry-go-round has multiple uh, words in there. And then the open form is just open with a space. So an example, ice cream, because you have the word ice. 
which is cold. You put ice in a drink to make it cold. And then cream, which is a type of, uh, which comes from a cow. So it's similar to milk, if you're not familiar. Um, it has more fat in it than milk. And so we put them together because that's how you make ice cream. You take ice and cream and you put them together, but it's an open compound. So there's a space. And then here, now this is a tricky word because um, it are not tricky, but this is a common one rather. So peanut butter, often in the United States, maybe in your country as well, you might eat peanut butter on a sandwich. So you would take two pieces of bread and put peanut butter uh, to eat a peanut butter sandwich. That's when you take peanuts and you grind them up and it makes a paste. So peanut butter. So there's not actually butter in there, but we call it peanut butter because it has the texture of butter. So peanut butter. And then the last one is hot dog. So that's the word hot and dog, even though it's not a, it's not a dog, you're not eating dog, hopefully. Um, but we have here, hot dog is just the two words, hot dog. And we eat that and you can see the photo here. It has mustard. Often we'll eat it on um, at its sports events in the United States and other countries they have where you can eat it at a football game or a basketball game or a baseball game, uh, et cetera. So now, now that we talked about the three different types of compound uh, words, we had closed form, open form, and hyphenated, um, we're going to get a little bit more into those, and we'll talk specifically um, with those with nouns. So closed form, again, together, you have just two words together, no space or hyphen. We'll give you some examples, and then later we'll talk more about these. So we have the lighthouse directs ships away from the rocks. So the lighthouse, it's lighthouse, and I have the compound words are in bold, so they're darker letters, um, so you can see them just to make sure you can follow along. So light and house together, and that helps prevent ships. It says it keeps uh, the ships away from the rocks. So you'll see it on the coast or where the land meets the water. And that's to let ships know at night. It's a light that shows them there's land here. Don't come too close. And then we have butterfly. So butter and fly. And that is watch the butterfly on the flower over there. So the butterfly is um, an insect that flies. It has different colors. And next we have, you should secure your furniture in case there's an earthquake. So the compound is earth and quake. And an earthquake is when the ground shakes very violently. Um, and there's different, you know, that happens all over the world. Sometimes after a, a volcanic eruption, there's an earthquake. But um, here, earthquake, it says you should secure your furniture in case there's an earthquake. And that just means make sure your furniture uh, is safe so it doesn't move around and, and maybe damage something else in your house or your apartment or building. Hyphenated words, we'll, we'll talk about compound words. I'm sorry, compound nouns. So again, these are just nouns that we're talking about with compounds in this instance. Hyphenated form, Janice works out so much that she has a six pack. Now, we talked about six pack as a... Um, is six drinks in a container. Here, a six pack is uh, a slang or a, a term for your abdomen or your abs. So if someone is a often a lot of athletes or football players, when they work out so much, they burn a lot of calories when they exercise and they eat healthier. So you can see all of their abs and we call that a six pack. Um, so that's kind of slang. And then we have give the balloons to the five-year-old in line. Here again, a lot of the compounds we've talked about are two. This one has three. So five-year-old, give the balloon to the five-year-old in line. And a five-year-old is just a t um, the age of a child. So you could say if this is a five-year-old in line, give the balloon, and it might just be to make them happy. So we take the three different words, five, year, and old. Now, last, we have, you're such a sweet son-in-law. And again, this is three compounds, son-in-law. And this would be, when you have two people married, the parents um, would be the in-laws, we call them. So this would be referring to the son-in-law would be the, the parents of the, depending on the marriage, it could be, um, it would be the parents of the spouse. So if you are the one who is not their parents, 
you they you would they would be your mother or father in law. You would be their son in law if you're a male, or a daughter in law if you're female. Open form, can we and open form again? No hyphen, no. Um, there is a space. It's not together. So can we stop by the post office later today? Again, we talked about that word post office where you get the mail. The tax cut is just for the middle class. So the tax cut um, is a term when we talk about maybe accounting or filing your taxes in your country. A tax cut would be a break or a discount that you could get on your taxes to save money, a, a break, a discount, or an incentive in some way that you can save more money uh, and not have to pay more. We would call that a tax cut because it's like cutting with a pair of scissors. And then we have, she is the first female attorney general of our state. An attorney general, um, it, it might be different in different countries, but in the United States, we have the word attorney, which is like a lawyer, the same it's just a different word, and then general. So you might hear the term general in a military sense or an army. We put those together, attorney general. Um, you can think of a general like a leader. So the attorney general of a state, or we also have it of the United States, um, is the lead attorney or the um, for the criminal system, criminal justice system. So this would be the attorney general for a certain state. All right, so those are... Um, a little bit more about the compound form. So now we'll talk about gerunds. So uh, if you don't, here's a little definition just in case maybe you haven't covered it or you don't remember or you're not familiar with what a gerund is. But gerunds are words that are formed as verbs but used as nouns. These words always ending in in. So that's the definition. In the middle, you'll see the um, examples we have here. And that will be horseback riding. So we have the compound noun, which is horse and back. We put those together. And horseback riding is if you're on top of a horse, because they stand on four legs, you, you are on their back. And so when you're riding a horse, that is called horseback riding. Then we have walking stick. So you take um, the walking and again we add the ing there to call a walking stick and that's just something that you can hold while you're walking that can help you keep your balance or help take some of the pressure off your legs um, so your legs don't or your knees don't hurt as much when you are walking and then we have laughing stock so laughing stock is kind of a, a, a slang word but what we're doing is we're taking the word laugh and then you're making that a gerund, you're adding the ing. So it's a, a verb now. Because, um, and so what will you see, laughing stock. And now that is kind of a, it's a slang term in the United States, but basically it's someone that seems maybe silly or maybe that's embarrassing them. Um, or maybe if someone is the laughing stock of a company, it's someone that maybe people don't, might not respect as much or they, don't look highly upon, or maybe they do silly or things that might not seem as intelligent. And so they might not have as much respect. So that's the laughing stock, meaning it's just saying like everyone laughs at them. And then a, a few more examples. So we'll use them in sentences now. So we talked about horseback riding. Here we'll say, I want to go horseback riding while I'm on vacation. And with walking stick, the doctor suggested, su suggested, that I use a walking stick to help me put less pressure on my leg. So that's what I was talking about because you can push down with your arm so you don't have to put as much pressure on your knees. And then we have the last one, laughing stock. No one wants to be the laughing stock of their school. So that means most of the people might look negatively upon them and not respect them as much. And that's a laughing stock. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so we talked about the three types of compound um, word forms. We went to compound verbs, uh, compound nouns, rather, and now we're going to talk about compound verbs. So compound verb is a verb that is made up of multiple words, and the compound verb can take on such a form as, so the, there's four types of uh, compound verbs, uh, and we'll talk about these a little bit more. So a prepositional verb can be a compound verb, 
a phrasal verb, a compound single word verb, and a verb with auxiliaries. Auxiliaries. So we'll go and talk about these more. It might seem confusing at first, but we're going to talk more about the definitions. We'll give some examples, um, and hopefully that'll help you ex understand it more and and get what a compound, a different types of compound verbs. So. First one we'll talk about is a compound prepositional verb. And that's a prepositional, uh, a prepositional verb is a combination of a verb and a preposition to form a new word. So prepositional verbs may not be separated within a sentence. So an example, i.e., if you see that, that just means an example. We have the apply for, add to, care for, result in, deal with long for. And we'll talk about, um, we'll use some of these in sentences, but in case you're not familiar, uh, we have apply for is if you apply for a job, that means um, you would request to be hired or request to receive something. So if you, if maybe you're going to university and you're looking for scholarships or money to help pay for university, you could apply for scholarships. Add to, um, we would add to just means to add more or uh, in addition to, we have care for. So that's when you look after or you take care in. So you might say, I am, if a friend says, do you want to go out and eat at a restaurant tonight? You might say, I can't, I am busy. I have to care for my younger sibling or sister or brother. Result in, so we could say if you're talking about football or in the United States, we call it soccer. You could say the goalie or the goalkeeper made a mistake and it resulted in the team losing the game. We have deal with, meaning you just have to um, address or try to fix or solve. So maybe you have a leak uh, in, your, um, in your apartment and its water is leaking. You have to deal with the problem, meaning you have to take care or try to fix the leak so no more water uh, is leaking in your house or apartment. And then long for, meaning it means to strive, uh, not to strive, but it means to desire or to wish with wishful thinking. So you might long for maybe you went on vacation to a beautiful country or a beach and you long for the time when you can go back there and visit that. So examples we'll just talk about here quickly. Andy has applied for many job posts recently. So that's what we're talking about, apply. So he is applying for many jobs, meaning he is trying to get a job or a new job and he wants to get hired. So he would maybe send in his resume or CV as in different countries, depends on the country you're in. And so he did that in the past, which is we say apply for, but applied, we're adding the ED um, at the end. And then the second example, they all counted on him to deliver the services. So services, if you have a business, it's usually you have customers and they are paying you money for a service or a good. So a good could be food like a restaurant or maybe it's something you make like a table or a chair or a TV. And they are counting. They all counted on him, meaning they all counted him to deliver his services or what he promised he said he would. So these are compound prepositional verbs. And again, if you have questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer them or we can talk about it at the end. All right. Now, the second compound verb, second uh, type of compound verb is compound phrasal verbs. So phrasal verbs are often very common, um, especially if you're taking class with Lingo for Me. They can be common in English. So here we'll talk about compound phrasal verbs. A phrasal verb consists of a verb and another element usually a preposition or an adverb that creates a distinct meaning or a specific meaning. So here's an example. My vehicle broke down on the highway. So here, now this can be kind of tricky because it might not sound exactly what, what you would think it was, but broke, it means when something isn't working anymore or it stopped working or maybe it fell apart. And down normally is the ver like is the you actually look down. So look down at the ground. But here, 
it's adding, we talked about a distinct meaning or a specific meaning. When you take broke or break and down and put them together, it means when something stops functioning. So my vehicle, maybe it was a motorcycle or a car, or you could say the airplane broke down, something like that. So that just means it, um, it developed a fault. It stopped functioning properly stopped working properly. Now, the, another example is, I can't believe anything he says. He is fond of making up stories. So this sentence means, I don't believe, um, I'm not able to believe anything he says to me. They might maybe think they're, they're lying or maybe they're a liar or not truthful. He is fond of making up stories. That fond just means like they like or they do often. So they like to make up stories often, so I don't trust them because this story might be made up as well. But the compound um, words we're talking about is making and then up. So it means telling lies. So it can often be bad if you're telling lies and you're making up a story, but maybe um, you know, if you're younger in school, you might do a writing exercise or practice and you might make up a fictional or a fake story um, just to practice writing and come up with different stories. So making up here, I can't believe anything he says because he is fond or he likes, um, he is fond of making up stories. So that is compound phrasal verb. We'll go to the next verb, uh, the next compound verb form, and that is compound single word verbs. So compound single word verb is when a compound word is whether separated by a hyphen or not, functions as a verb. So before this point, we talked about the three different firm, uh, forms of compound words, open, closed, and hyphenated. Here, and they're always different. Now here, because we're talking about verbs and we're going more specifically into the type of compound verbs, here can be a little tricky because it can be a compound single word, but it doesn't always necessarily mean that it has a hyphen uh, um, or not. So it might be just one word or a hyphen. So we'll give some examples. Hopefully that should help you understand it more. So I had to pull over all the way. I'm sorry. I had to pull over at the way because my car was overheating again. So we, the compound again is bold. It's um, highlighted here over and heating, we put them together, that means it was getting too hot. So in a car or a lot of electronic or technology equipment, you would have um, when it starts to function because it's electric, it can get very hot. And usually there is something in place to help it cool down or not get so hot. So here in English, you would have um, anti, I'm sorry, you would have a coolant you would have coolant in your car and that helps and that kind of flows through your car because as the engine is going and it's burning the gas, it can get um, hot, more and more hot. So there's a system in there to help keep the car cool. And if that isn't working or it breaks, you could say your car broke down because it was overheating. So that would be the two um, different compound words in there. And overheating just means getting too hot. Or you could be outside in the sun. Maybe you're at the beach and you are and you would say, I need to go inside or I need to drink some water because I am overheating, meaning I am getting too hot and I need to cool down. Or maybe you go into the ocean to cool down because you are overheating. Second example we have is Jessica babysits Carson and Stella on Saturday night. So Jessica is a, we would call her a babysitter, which is a term that means you watch babies or younger kids and you're hired, you know, either by the family or the parents. And in, in, in this instance, she's watching two people, Carson and Stella, on Saturday nights. So she babysits. So we take baby and sit, even though sit is to sit down in a chair or sit down on the ground. Here in this instance, we use sit almost like to watch when they get together baby sit. They're separate words, but when you put them together, it means like to watch, to take care of. The airline book, um, the airline overbooked our flight, so we received vouchers for the next one. So here we have over and booked. So when you book a, a reservation or maybe an appointment, you could book an, uh, a doctor's appointment. 
meaning you schedule or you make. Here, what happens on airplanes a lot is they overbook, and that means they take more passengers than they have or more passengers than they have capacity for. And that's because often people cancel flights or something comes up and they need to reschedule their flight to another time or day. And here they overbooked our flight. So we received vouchers for the next one. That a voucher is a ticket or a discount or a free flight. Um, or maybe it's a free flight for your next flight. So the airline is saying, we made a mistake. We're sorry. Here is a voucher um, for your next flight. The last example here with compound single words that we'll give is, can you have someone proofread your essay before turning it in? So here we'll see proof and read, two words together. Um, proof can mean you know different things. but And then read, obviously, if you're reading a book or reading the computer, you're looking at the words, when we put them together, that means to, you could say, edit or correct or look for mistakes in a paper. So if you wrote, so this sentence is saying, can you have someone proofread your essay before turning it in? That means, can you have someone look at your essay? And an essay is just a, maybe it's a homework assignment in school. Or you can do an essay, you know, often writers do it when they're older and it's really their point of view or they're expressing what they feel on a certain topic. Um, and proofreading it would be have someone look it over and check if there's errors or mistakes or things that are incorrect that you need to change. So with a book, you will have a, a person who has a, is called an editor at a company and they will edit or proofread, look at the book before they publish or print them or make a lot of copies of the book to sell. So you will proofread to make sure there's no uh, errors or mistakes. So when you make copies and you sell all the books, everything is okay. And when people read the book, they don't see any errors. So that's the last example for compound single word. Now this will talk about compound verbs with auxiliaries. So in this, the definition in this form, a verb combines with another verb called uh, in a, a helping or an auxiliary, uh, auxiliary verb. Common helping verbs are, the common helping verbs we'll talk about are have, has, had, am, be, been, is, are, was, were, and modal helping verbs that can include can, could, may, should, and will. And together, those verbs uh, form a compound verb. So it, it might sound confusing now, but we'll give some examples to talk about it a little bit more um, to help you understand. So Joe was walking down the street last night. So we saw with the, the um, when we talked about the gerund, um, walking, you add the ing. But here you can see, if you look in the, for the definition, um, common helping verbs, at the very bottom, you see it was. So Joe was walking. The next example is the council will meet to discuss the issue tomorrow. So here you can see in this sentence, um, we have the word will. And that is the auxiliary in this instance. The next one is Jack and Jill are running up the hill. That's kind of a common phrase from um, a nursery rhyme in English. Jack and Jill ran up the hill to fetch a pail of water. But here you can see um, in there, Jack and Jill, what are they doing? They are running. So that's the auxiliary there. The next sentence, my friends are planning a big surprise party for me. So a surprise party could be a party. Maybe if you did something good, you got a new job, you were hired for a new job, or it's your birthday or anniversary, some type of celebration. A surprise party, surprise just means you're not expecting or ready. And they just, they planned and had a big surprise party for me, which means I was not expecting the party and they were planning it out. 
I should start my homework soon. So I should, if you see here, I should start my homework soon. That means that they're saying it's important that soon I start doing my homework so I can accomplish it uh, and it won't take too long. And let's go on to the next here. So we'll do some activities. Here, you can, if you, again, if you have questions, let me know. If not, you can follow along at home. You can type in the chat box if you'd like, uh, if, you can, if you have the answer. So now that you learned about the different types of compound words, see if you can find the compound words in the sentences below. So here's a little activity. And again, you can practice at your home. Type it in the chat box um, or just and, and see if you can find out what it is. So my grandfather is coming home for the holiday. So if you remember the closed form, so this will be a closed form compound word, and this is the closed form uh, noun. So you have grand and father. So a grandfather is either your mother or your father's father. So the dad or the father of one of your parents, and that's a grandfather. We combine those two words. I really want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I kind of gave this example when I, we talked about peanut butter in the open form example. Peanut butter, and that again is peanuts that you grind down into a paste, and a sandwich you can put jelly, which is usually made from fruit and sugar, and you put them together. It's a common thing we eat uh, in the United States and, and many other countries. The real estate, the next one, and I'll give you a little bit more time uh, to answer here or, or practice. The real estate agent had to take a test to get her license. So if you remember real estate, um, that is the real estate, like we talked about, that is the compound word here. And it's the type of agent, which means a someone who is a salesperson that sells different types of real estate. So land, maybe apartments, condominiums, houses, etc., or businesses, office buildings. Next, we'll go to, she is a part-time worker. Uh, part, sorry. She is a part-time teacher. And I'll give you a second to see if you can find that. So you'll see here, if you haven't figured out, that's okay. But it's part-time is the compound because you see the little hyphen or that dash in between part-time. Then the next one hopefully should be easy for you. We'll see. We gave this example earlier, if you remember. That is our full-time worker. So we're saying the person over there is our full-time worker. And so here... The compound word is an hyphenated word, just like above. Part-time means some of the time, not all of the time. Full-time um, in the United States would be 40 hours a week, a full-time worker. It means you have a full-time job. Um, and so full-time is the compound. Next, we have, I'm so tired of looking for on-campus housing. So we gave this example if you were... Um, here in the beginning, we gave this example in the beginning for, uh, I'll give you a, a few seconds to see if you can figure it out. I'm so tired of looking for on-campus housing. So the compound here is on campus. And again, that is referring to a campus of a university or college. And on-campus housing, meaning the person or someone is living on the campus and not in their apartment far away from the campus. So they live within the university uh, parameters or within, within the university here. So the next one is he was a 70, he was 72 years old. We'll see if you can get this one here. He was 72 years old. So the compound word here is 72. So we take the number 70, which is seven zero, and then we add two. So we make it to put them together 
And that's why you have the compound here. So 72, meaning it's 70 plus 2. So 72 years old. The next one is let's go play some basketball. So I'll give you a second here. Let's go play some basketball to see if you can find the type of compound word in this sentence. And you can remember the three different kinds, open, closed, and hyphenated. So the compound here is basketball. And that is talking about a ball. So we have basketball, which is a sport, basketball. And that's where the name of the sport comes from because they would long ago. Now they have a basket, or we also call it for slang, a hoop. So you can shoot the basketball into the hoop or the net or the basket. And we have a basket, which they used to play with, and it would be on a pole, and they would take a ball and try to throw it into that basket. So that's why they call it basketball, two words together. And then the last one here, has anybody seen my binder? Has anybody seen my binder? All right. So here we have anybody, which is any and body, which you know, body is a, a you know a human body, what we all have. And then any is um, it can be any amount. It's not a definite amount. And we put them together, and we have anybody or anyone are similar. And anybody. Um, he, this person is asking, has anybody, meaning has anyone, has anybody, he's not talking to anyone, or they, he or she is not talking to anyone specifically. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, and it was beneficial. Compound words are very common, obviously, in English. So it's good to know them. And it can help to help you to understand when you understand the different forms. And as you continue to practice and speak it, you'll be able to see them in language when you're reading or looking at a computer or when you're listening to people speak. You'll be able to identify them and that'll help you to improve your English. So thank you so much for joining today's class. I hope it was helpful. I will we'll see you all next time. If you do have questions, let me know uh, in the private chat and we will be able to, uh, I can answer them for you. Um, so if you have questions, let me know. If not, thank you so much. And I hope this helped. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. All right. So no questions or. All right. I see some comments here. Oh, no. So I see. Okay. So in the comments, um, Lord, this says, hey there. Hi. How are you? Armando. Hello. Hi, Armando. Maritza. Uh, uh, Maritza. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Maritza Neves. The image isn't good. I'm so sorry about that. Um, so we will have this image. You, we're, we're doing live streaming now, so you can watch it. Uh, we also will have it saved, so on our Facebook page as well, on Lingo for Me Facebook page, you'll be able to watch this um, on demand whenever you'd like. Uh, so hopefully that it, it will be better presentation there. Uh, and you can watch that on your phone, computer, whatever device. Hopefully um, it, it should be more clear. Maybe try a different device when you watch it on demand. So you'll be able to watch it. Again, it'll be on our Facebook page. So, yep, Maritza, I see that. Could you please send the presentation here? The image is blurs. Okay, great. Hi, Maurice. I see you there. Okay, great. Yeah, so look out for that. We will post it to our Facebook page, uh, and you'll be able to watch it whenever you'd like, however many times you'd like. Um, it's a, it's an interesting and fun topic, so you might watch it a ton. Just kidding. But um, okay, great. Maurice, you understood that? Oh, wonderful. Thank you for joining. Hen uh, Henrique, how are you, Henrique? Thanks for joining. Mariela. Easy pesca, I hope. Easy pesca, easy fish. Okay, easy peasy. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, easy pesca. Great. Well, thank you all for joining. I appreciate it. Um, if you have any other comments, let me know. We're going to end here shortly. And then if you have other questions as well, um, you know, let me know and we can talk about them. If you'd like more examples, um, if you have a question about, you know, the different compound forms, let me know. Um, or if you'd like me to clarify or explain something that might have been confusing during the presentation, I'm happy to do that as well. All right.
Maritza, thank you. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was helpful. Um, and then hopefully, you know, look out for the, uh, when we post it to our, our Facebook page and other social media, you'll be able to check that out. Hopefully the, the images come through a little bit more clearly for you. All right. Yeah, I said hi to everyone. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you all. Was this helpful? You can let me know in the comments. Did you enjoy this? Was this helpful? Was it fun? Was it boring? Hopefully not boring. It's a, it's a, it's not um like space travel. It's not always as as fun as that. Or talking about you know Elon Musk or something like that. But hopefully this was enjoyable and it's it's an important topic and when you're learning English to. Um, really give you a good solid foundation so that you can continue to speak and practice and improve. Good. All right. So some destination. Okay. Comments. Okay. Yeah. And if you have, you know, any other questions, if anyone else has any other questions about English or compound words or English in general, let me know. Um, but hopefully are you all, students currently at Lingo for Me or are you prospective students? Are you maybe looking to join Lingo for Me or maybe are you just curious um, and want to learn more and, and just wanted to see the live stream to learn English better? Let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are or, or where, you know, what you're doing or why, what made you want to join this? We're happy to have you. I'm excited. Um, you know, let us know what made you want to join it. Maybe you can talk about where you're from. That'd be interesting to see where all the different people watching this presentation are fun. That's the nice thing about technology and lingo for me. A lot of my students are, I teach people who are in Brazil and Colombia and are from, or maybe Venezuela, Argentina, all over. So it's really interesting uh, with technology that we can communicate the whole world now, uh, right from our home. So it's, it's, uh, let us know where you're from if you want to put that in there too. Thank you, Michael Traeger. Awesome presentation. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hopefully it was good. Glad you liked it. All right. So yeah, if you want to let us know where you're from, if you're still here, if you're still in, we are, we're happy to have you. Um, you can tell us where you're from. We can talk about that as well. I'm in Brazil. Maritza, you're in Brazil. That's amazing. That's great. That's very cool. Yeah. I, um, have a few students in, in Brazil and some that live in other places that are from there. Speak Portuguese that can go to me. Uh, it's really fun. So yeah, that's fine. I, I love Brazilian culture, Brazilian food, feijoada, pan de queijo. Um, so, and if you're over 21, caipirinhas are good. If you're not, you can, edit that out or pretend you didn't hear it. Um, all right. Kelly Cascada. I'm so, I'm so sorry, Kelly. I mispronounced your name. Casade. Kelly Casade. It was a good presentation. Brazil. That's great, Kelly. All right. Two people from Brazil. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a, it's a great country um, and a lot, huge country. A lot of people that, that we teach are from there. That's fun. Thank you for your class. It was amazing. Flora Jordan. Thank you, Flora. Where are you from, Florida? Flora, Florida. I'm sorry. Where are you from, Flora? You can let us know. I'm glad you, you liked the class. I'm glad it was amazing. Um, so that's good. I, uh, I appreciate that. That helps my self-esteem. That's good. I, uh, it's not always the easiest talking to no one. So it's good to know that someone appreciated it or at least pretended to appreciate it. That's good. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. What part of Brazil are you all from? You can let us know um, below if you'd like. Flora Jordan. I'm from the United States, if you're curious. Um, I don't know how many are, are curious about that, but um, I'm from the United States. I'm from a state called Wisconsin in the northern part. Uh, it gets very cold. It's right by Canada, uh, and uh, I'm from a city called Madison. It's the capital of the state of Wisconsin, um, and it gets very cold in the winter. So I, I'm in, currently in Quito, Ecuador. Uh, in Quito, Ecuador, it's uh, up in the mountains here, which is nice, but it's still warmer than Wisconsin and also healthier. There's a lot more fruits and vegetables in Wisconsin. 
we eat a lot of meat and cheese and um, sausages and hamburgers. So I'm eating a lot more fruit um, and, and trying to, to exercise a little bit more in the mountains. All right, Kelly, born in Sao Paulo, living in Florida. That's great. I, um, I have other, uh, yeah, we have, have uh, there's some large populations of Brazilian people or people from Brazil I know in New Jersey, uh, parts of New Jersey, New York, and then also in Florida. Uh, I have some friends that live in the Orlando area that are actually from Brazil that have been living in the U.S. So it's cool. It's not uh, too much of a change for you then. It's pretty hot and humid down there as well. So I'm, I'm sure it's similar um, weather or climate. That's fun. Living in Florida, Maritza, Maritza, I'm sorry, I hope I'm, I'm, I hope I'm saying your name right, Maritza, Sao Paulo, that's great, Sao Paulo, two Sao Paulos, both from Brazil, both from Sao Paulo, that's amazing, that's good, yes, Sao Paulo is uh, St. Paul, an amazing, really good city, so I hopefully uh, you guys really enjoyed this. All righty. Well, thank you all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day, great rest of your night, morning, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, uh, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this. And uh, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you all again, um, either at Lingo for Me, or, you know, working with you, helping to learn English or working uh, or at the next webinar or the live stream. All right. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you all later. Thank you.